Hello there and welcome. I'm Ole Brugger and today I'm going to do something a bit different than I usually do. Not that different, we're still going to build some stuff, but it, the material choices are very different because I'm going to work with a material I never worked with before. And a while ago, my son, he got this RC plane and this is not what we're going to talk about today, but more what was protecting it inside. And this is EPS foam. I never worked with that before, but um, I thought the shape were very interesting. Maybe we can recycle this instead of throwing it into the dumpster. I think this could be a very nice cave. And when I was cutting my cliffs, I got these cutoffs. You can still see there's the bullet holes from previous video. But if you flip it around, I think these parts have a very interesting look to attach for the inside of this cave. Let's get started and see what we can do with it. This is EPS foam. This is what is mostly common used for packaging compared to extruded polystyrene XPS foam. I have this 3D printed part from Dude Studios, which is a rolling door, and I want to use it in my build. But first, I will start marking it up. The doorway should be here, and then we need a door here for maybe a treasure chamber or something else, maybe a prisoner. And here I want to build some pipes, so we can have some kind of water running out of here, or maybe some toxin or acid, or whatever. And over here, I want to build a cave. So here we have a small entrance, and then I will make a cave in this corner here. And in the big area here, I want some running water, and then I need a pathway over the other side, and maybe some cliffs. So I will cut all this away. And I will use my handheld hot wire cutter to cut away all the parts I don't need. And this is where I want the rolling door, so I need to straighten out this side. And then I'll just need to cut out all the rest. I have all these foam cutoffs from previous projects, and I'll use them to fill in all the holes where needed. I also have these cutoffs from my cliff project, and I think it will become handy over here. I'll use my hot glue gun to put in the parts. For the tiny cave in the corner, I will use my hot knife just to cut it out rough. The hole was a bit too deep, so I filled in with some more foam. And then I will build a wall to hold the mechanics for the rolling door. I'll use a dull pencil to draw in some stones. And then I will use a piece of sandpaper to roughen it up, so it will get some texture. To fill in all the gaps and make some more texture, I will use this drywall filler. I also needed to raise the bottom of the treasure chamber, so I cut out a piece of foam and gave it a texture with a pencil. And then it was just gluing it in. I cut out two pieces of foam to fill in the gaps in the side. Here we're going to install the pipes, which are made out of the caps from some spray bottles. I'll just cut them down in size, and then I will make a press fit, cut out a hole, make some stone texture with a pencil, and glue them in. And then I'll use some drywall filler to fill in the gaps. Everything has been set to dry for 24 hours and it's time to do some sanding. And look what a mess it made. Every time I used one of these Q-tips, I will break off the tip and then I will use the stick for some bars. I'll make a pointy end and push it through the bottom. Plug it with a piece of foam and then I will put on a patch. The hole in this corner I will fill in with some foam and then I will put in some sticks as bars and put some drywall filler in the gaps. Here I will make a drain hole. I will use my hot knife to cut through. And a couple of sticks in as bars. Trim it off and put on a patch. And I will fill in some more bars here in this gap. I'll draw up some broken tiles as a texture for all the surfaces that are above the waterline. And then I will cut out some more bars that will act as a door for the treasure chamber. This will be removable and I will use a piece of balsa wood for the top. And then some glue to put in some scenery sand. I cut out a piece of foam in each side to level out all the platforms because there was a tiny recess. 
Then it's time to cover it all up in some mud podge mixed with black paint and a tiny bit of water. Now it just have to dry for a couple of hours. Now that it's dry, I will spray paint it with Dungeon Subterrain from the Army Painter. I have some leftover 3D printed parts from my sewer tiles and I will use them in this project. And then I have three more parts out of the box of shame. I painted it black and then I will give it a centerfold highlight with a matte grey. I'll just do a slobby paint job with some speed paints. All these parts will hardly be seen because they will be covered in epoxy resin. The rolling door, on the other hand, I will pay a bit more attention to because that will be very visible and I really like the details of this print. I'll use some of the basing colors from the Army Painted Dungeon and Cavern set. I'll just use a heavy dry brush and mix in the colors. For the underground river, I will make it dark in the middle and light in the sides just to give the impression of a depth. Then I will glue in all the dead people. For all the banks, I will use this Vallejo thick mud to give it a lighter and dirtier look. To give the water some more dirt, I will put in some branches and some green foam stuff. And of course, we also need some tufts. To make some running water out of the pipes, I will use my hot glue gun to make the drops and then I will bend it with my hot wire cutter and glue them in. The paint is mostly dry and now I will use a dry brush on top of it with a lighter grey. I printed out this image of a sewer to make a backdrop for the holes behind the bars. All the paint is now dry and it's time to pour some resin. I used this epoxy resin mixed two to one and then I put it in my vacuum chamber to remove all the bubbles. As a precaution, I used some packaging tape to seal up all the holes, just to make sure that it wouldn't leak when I was pouring the resin. I let it sit for 24 hours and fortunately there was no leaks. I'm pretty happy with the result. I can even see my face in it. I didn't mix up any colors in my resin, so I will use this AK still water mixed with some speed paints to give it some more darker and more sewage like color. On top of the glue from the goo gun and the water, I will use this diorama water effect from AK. I will glue in some of this reindeer lichen in the corners to act as plants, uh, so it will look pretty old and very gross and nasty and more interesting to look at. I'll also need some wooden bridges. For this I will use some balsa wood and coffee stir sticks. I cut out some pieces of cardboard to act as brackets for this beam. And glued it on with some super glue. And then I used some coffee stir sticks to act as planks. Dark wood speed paint to give it some color. And some rough iron for the metal brackets. And some super glue to attach it to the wall. I made three small bridges and one big one. I painted it with the dark wood speed paint and then I put on some green wash. I didn't think the wash was visible enough, so I used some orc skin from the Army Painter's wall paints and wiped it off with a cloth. To cover up the outside of the box, I will use some black craft paper and cut it to size. I just use a ruler and my X-Acto knife. And then I will just use some glue stick to glue it on. And then I will just trim the edge with my hobby knife. I'll also make some covers for a couple of the rooms, so I can hide and surprise my players with treasures and maybe some monsters. And we are done. I'm really happy of how this turned out. When I was unboxing the plane with my son and I saw this interior uh, protecting it, I actually had ideas beaming into my mind that, oh, if I cut there and I can have a room there and cut this. It was just already in my mind when I just saw this. I think this uh, turned out exactly as I wanted it and I had so much fun doing it. I built it over the last three weeks using half an hour there, an hour there. And I think in total, I maybe used about six or seven hours on this. And that's not much just to get something awesome like this. The way I can upcycle this instead of just throwing it out, I think it's a pretty good idea as well. We are hitting the 1000 subs very soon. So if you didn't already, please subscribe if you think I deserve it. And I will make a live stream on my 1000 subs. 
Thank you so much for watching this to the end. Goodbye for now.